Well everybody, this month is a very special one for Giant Monster fans, because after years of fan speculation, there's finally a new Godzilla movie out in theaters. Not only is this the first new Godzilla movie in 10 years, but it's also the first American attempt at the beloved Japanese monster since that one movie featuring the Jay Leno iguana. Will the new movie be any good? Who knows? But, in honor of this momentous occasion, I am going to finally give in and review a vintage Godzilla movie. So, hopefully this will get some of you to cool it with the requests for a little while. Now let's see, last time I did Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, so if I do the logical thing and do the next movie in the series, that would be... <sighs> oh boy, here we go. Well, the world of cinema gave us Son of Kong, Son of Frankenstein, and even Son of the Pink Panther, so it was only natural that we would also get Son of Godzilla. The movie that shows us that not only is Godzilla an unstoppable engine of destruction and a potent metaphor for nuclear annihilation, he's also a proud father. Now, if some of you have never heard of Godzilla's son before, that's because he's kind of the black sheep of the family. And when I say black sheep, I mean a lot of people would have been perfectly happy if Godzilla put the kid in a basket, dropped it in front of an orphanage, rang the doorbell, and then got the hell out of there. Ah oh, well, at least in this movie he just has one kid and not an army of wannabe velociraptors. So, let's get started. By the way, this is another TriStar DVD, which means the English dub was done by the same people who did the one for Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Here's hoping the voices won't be as annoying this time. It's gone? So quickly? From the southwest, there's nothing there. And that's a negatory on that one. Captain, the radio's out. It can't be. Yeah, it can't be out. I mean, look at the sky. It's clear as a bell. Maybe it's the electrical storm. So you knew that, but still said the radio couldn't possibly be out. No, it's nothing like that. It's more like a brainwave. What? Brainwave? That wouldn't interfere with the radio. He's right. Th I guess. Oh! Huh? What's that down there? Godzilla! Oh, thank God. Godzilla's here. Maybe the giant radioactive dinosaur will inject some logical sense into this movie. Oh. The interference is gone now. It must have been Godzilla. What? What the hell are you talking about? Slow down, movie. I'm not even two minutes in and I'm already reaching critical riff mass here. What's that? Solgill Island. I don't know. But look. Godzilla is heading that way. Maybe something is calling Godzilla. How do you know that? What are you basing all this on? I'm not trying to go through every line of dialogue here, but this opening scene throws so many random ideas at you, it's almost like the filmmakers had no idea how to begin the movie and just thought if they tossed out a bunch of random shit about brainwaves and radio interference, nobody'd notice. Okay, so the gist is Godzilla's heading towards an island for some reason, the pilots have nothing to do with the rest of the movie, roll credits. Whew, okay, we got through it. Well, I will say this about the movie. It has easily the happiest music in the series so far. Seriously, I almost expected to see Gilligan walking along the beach here. Hmm, this kind of makes me wonder how this music would go with the first movie. Well, it's no Disco Inferno, but it's still pretty good. Hey look, it's some people who actually have something to do with the plot. Shall we start checking? Senchan! Ah, uh, you check it out. All right. Oh, Senchan, your surly attitude never ceases to amuse me. I gotta admit, Tokyo Disneyland was not that impressive looking in its early days. Although, I suppose that could have been because of the giant monsters. So... That thing's out again. It didn't see us. That's good, because the audience didn't see anything either. Anyway, time to meet the rest of the team. By the way, it's nice to know the Red Bamboo Leader decided to stop being evil and found himself a new job. Look, he even managed to get his eye fixed. Oh. 
some strange interference. Do you think it could be brain waves? No, oh, I'm sorry, it's just a plane. Oh yeah, remember at the beginning when I said the guys in the plane have nothing to do with the rest of the movie? Well, I was right, because this isn't them. It's got to be a plane from the UN. Nope, but the plane does contain a character who will actually have something to do with the rest of the movie. Nice of you to come get me. That's my baggage. This is Goro, a reporter who not only managed to find out about the top secret UN research station, but actually convinced a plane to drop him off here too by using... Uh, I want to say investigative journalism? Hey, wait a second, I recognize this guy. Still studying it. You say that every time I ask. Okay, well, at least he got a better dub actor to go along with his career change. You'll have to go back. That's ridiculous. You're the one that's ridiculous. No, until I get a story, I won't move an inch. Great, so Goro's got the journalistic instincts of a three-year-old boy. You better be good, Goro, or else they'll send you to bed without your dinner. I came all the way down here to this place just because of my stomach. Every time I get a good lead, my stomach starts to grow. And I stay with it till I get what I want. Don't you work the same way? You keep experimenting till you get what you want? Yeah, in my experience, Japanese experiments usually lead to giant monsters. I'd get the hell out of there while you still can, Goro. Damn, that was a loud sip. Nope, my mistake. It was just a giant monster. It's a giant praying mantis. Well, it's good to know the UN remembered to include a chief executive of stating the obvious on the team. Actually, the weirdest thing about this giant mantis isn't how big it is, but rather the fact that apparently nobody considers it that big of a deal. Did you find the giant praying mantis? Praying mantis? All you have to worry about is making sure the meals are on time. Huh? Hey, anything interesting happen? Stupid idiot, there's nothing interesting about this island. Yeah, if you've seen one island with six-foot insects, you've seen them all. All of us are starting to get a little bit edgy. Why is that? Because we've been cooped up on the spooky island for over three months. Ah? Huh? Interesting. But why do you say spooky island? Giant fucking mantis! Oh, well, I guess they just have more important things to think about. Like what to make for dinner that night. Why don't you cook some fresh vegetables for a change? Are there any growing on the island? Sure there is. Most of it's been picked around here. But there's lots of it in the jungle. Yeah, you know. It's the jungle with the giant mantis in it. Now get your ass out there and find us some vegetables. Oh well, I guess it's not all bad. Turns out there's more in the jungle than just monsters. <gasps> Wait, don't go. I was just going to take pictures of you without your knowledge. Oh man, why do girls always react that way? Well, the boys back at the base won't believe this. No, seriously, they don't believe him. And what are you going to do about that young native girl? Crazy? This island is uninhabited. Okay, so I guess a six-foot praying mantis isn't weird, but apparently seeing a girl is completely unbelievable. Man, good thing you didn't say he saw trees in the jungle or else their heads would explode. Just what are they doing on this island anyway? Siberian tundra, African deserts, South American jungles. If we can control the weather and convert these waste areas into fertile land, we'll eliminate the danger of famine. And if the experiment goes really well, they might be able to turn Winnipeg into a place that's actually livable. If you're working for the good of mankind, why is it a secret? In the wrong hands, it would be possible to freeze any area of the world. A weapon far worse than any nuclear bomb. Yeah, instead of your flesh melting away in a giant fireball, you'd be forced to turn up the thermostat and put a coat on. And if any of you ever shoveled snow out of a driveway, it's hell on earth, I tell ya! So the next day, they decide to go ahead with the experiment. Begin Operation Golden Shout... Oh, wait a second, I made a Golden Shower joke in my last Godzilla video, didn't I? Okay, never mind. Suddenly, Sol Gale Island became the center of a radioactive storm, and an unbelievable heat wave settled over the area. Hey, I'm the only one doing voiceover narration on this video, got it? Uh-oh, looks like another side effect of the experiment is that it turned the professor into Hunter S. Thompson. That's where the girl was swimming. Don't you believe that I saw a girl? And I don't believe in ghosts either. Okay, are women just like leprechauns in Japan or something? Why is it so hard to believe he saw a girl on the island? And I don't believe in ghosts either. I mean, giant praying mantises and fire-breathing dinosaurs are one thing, but dickless humans? That simply defies all logic. Oh, I'm sorry, did somebody say giant mantis? Professor. How did the praying mantis get that big? 
The intense heat and radioactive storm. It could have started the cells growing. You know, I love that they needed this explanation for the mantises to be this size. I mean, they couldn't just have the radiation make a regular mantis that big. That would just strain my suspension of disbelief. But if the radiation made a mantis that was already six feet tall for no reason that big, well, that I could buy into. We're cut off. We'll have to go to the tower and contact the base. Come on. Oh, and just for the record, I still don't believe you saw a woman. They make it back to base and decide to keep working on the experiment. Personally, I would just pack up and try and find an island that didn't have giant mantis monsters on it, but hey, that's just me. And speaking of unbelievable monsters... Ah! A girl! Kill it! Professor! Did you see her? That's the girl! Are you sure it was a girl? It could have just been a giant ladybug. I mean, that would go with the giant praying mantis. Oh, wait, what am I saying? I can't just keep calling them Giant Mantis. This is a Japanese monster movie. They need a name. Giant Mantis. Giant Praying Mantis. Goro thought it up last night. Pretty good. It would take a reporter to think of a name like that. Yeah, or a five-year-old. Actually, in the Japanese version, they're called Kamakaras, which means... Mantis. Okay, so I guess I'll just stick with Giant Mantis, then. Now, at this point, some of you may be asking, where the hell is Godzilla's son already? Well, don't worry, because we're about to see him. Wait. Wait, wait, did I say don't worry? I meant you should worry, because we're about to see him. So the Gymantis is... um... Gymanti? Dah, whatever. Find an egg embedded in a mountain for some reason, and when they crack it open, out comes... the baby from dinosaurs? I'm the baby, gotta love me! Ah, uh, no. I don't gotta love you. This is Minya, or Minilla, depending on which version you're watching. And to Godzilla fans, he's something of a love him or hate him character. And in case you couldn't tell by now, I kinda lean towards the hate side. I know a big reason they added a baby Godzilla to the series was to appeal more to kids, but here's something the producers of this movie didn't understand. Even when I was a little kid, I didn't watch Godzilla movies to see some helpless little tadpole turd get its ass kicked by bugs. I watched them to see Godzilla. Seriously, was there anybody as a kid who liked Minya better than Godzilla? Or any monster for that matter? Who looks at this, even as a little kid, and goes, oh, well, now I can see myself liking this series. It looks like a baby Godzilla. No, it doesn't. Godzilla should really consider having a paternity test done on him. In fact, is Minya even the same species as Godzilla? He looks like what would happen if Kermit the Frog fucked the Pillsbury Doughboy. Actually, one of my biggest questions for this movie is, how exactly is Minya Godzilla's son? Seriously, there's no Mrs. Godzilla, and even if there was, we don't know whose egg this is. The Gymatuses just dig it up, it cracks open, Minya comes out, and Godzilla just goes, Okay, I guess he's my kid. The name of this movie should have been Adopted Son of Godzilla. Speaking of which, where the hell is Godzilla anyway? Oh, oh my god, it's the trailer for the 1998 Godzilla! Run! Oh, thank God. Godzilla finally made it to the island. I don't even care that the suit they used for this movie looks like a toad crossed with a cancerous tumor. I'm just glad he's here to kick some giant monster ass. Hey, don't run. That's considered a delicacy in some countries. Okay, so just like the last movie had the King of the Monsters versus a lobster dinner, this time he's fighting monsters that could presumably be defeated by a giant windshield. I think we all know how this fight's gonna go. Yeah, you better run. Nobody abuses Godzilla's son but him. Alright, I know I'm hating on Minya pretty hard here, but hey, at least one person in this movie seems to like him. For some reason. Eat this and you'll get real strong. Nah, he'll just stay the same size for a couple more movies and then basically just disappear. Ah, oh, damn it, Minya, quit humping the ground and get over here! <sighs> well, I hate to break this to you, Goro, but that wasn't a dream. You're still in Son of Godzilla. Also, women don't appreciate it when you try and go through their stuff. You robber! Robber? Hey, you can talk! Wow, a woman that can talk? This just keeps getting more unbelievable by the second. Next she'll be telling me she can hold down a job and vote, too. This is Reiko, the daughter of an archaeologist who was working on the island before he died. 
And now that Goro finally has proof that women are a real thing, he decides to show the rest of the team. Professor, I brought someone to meet you. Come on. <gasps> it's a woman. They do exist. Then the legends were true. This is Reiko Matsumiya. Matsumiya? Huh. Well, thanks for bringing her to us, Goro, but I've still got one question. Are you sure that's a woman? Uh, I still don't know if I believe you. The team decides to move all their equipment into Reiko's cave, because, you know, God forbid they just leave the monster-infested island. Anyway, let's see what Godzilla and Son are up to. See, now this is why you'll never be popular, kid. Even your dad's unconscious tail could kick your ass. Maybe I should just go back to the humans. Goro, you gave up! Are you really a man? Yes! Men and women are both real things! Shut up about it already! Reiko! Huh? Godzilla! You know, you really deserve a smack upside the head for a mistake like that, Goro. Hey, come back! He's really harmless! Yeah, he's harmless. No, really. Minya literally could not harm anything. Also, why does Minya sound like a donkey with asthma? Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez, the Earth is doomed after I'm gone. There you have it, folks. The future protector of Earth. And just in case you think I'm being too hard on poor little Minya, let's do a little comparison of why Godzilla's better. Here's Godzilla. <laughs> And here's Minya. <laughs> yeah, I rest my fucking case. Fujisaki. Huh? What's a spiga? Oh, nothing. Just the English version of Kumanga. Spiga? It doesn't make any sense. I'll say. In the VHS version I had as a kid, they pronounced it Spiga. Okay, in case you're all wondering, the Spiga, or Spiga, or whatever, is a giant spider that also lives on the island. Godzilla and his baby, Gymatis and the Spiga. Now, this is a monster island. <laughs> no, that won't be introduced until the next movie. And in case you're wondering why we haven't seen the Spiga yet... Well, where is the Spiga? Sleeping under the ground down there. Yeah, don't you know? Lots of Japanese monsters do that. Godzilla seems to be having a little trouble teaching his son the basics of being the king of the monsters, but it's nothing a little abuse won't fix. Congratulations, son. Now I'm gonna teach you how to shave. But we don't have any hair. Shut up and get my razor, boy. And I hope you're happy, Minya. Your very presence on this island has caused the team to drink themselves into a stupor. With things the way they are now, we might as well give up the experiment. You know, that's the most sensible thing I've heard anybody say all movie. If this experiment really is as important as you say it is, maybe you should try doing it on an island that doesn't have a new radioactive monster getting discovered every half an hour. Oh, did Reiko go somewhere? Oh, she said something about getting some medicine, and she went out alone. Yeah, let her go into the monster-infested jungle by herself. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, right, the monsters. Looks like Reiko's in trouble, but thankfully she's saved at the last second by... Oh, what? Minya? Great. Well, now you're screwed, lady. Unless he manages to annoy the mantis to death. Oh, and look, he even managed to wake up the spider, too. Wow. Thanks for your help there, little buddy. Will somebody please hit him? Thank you. So now that the spider's awake, I gotta ask, was it always this size, or was it human-sized like the mantis and then the radiation made it this big? How exactly do the giant monsters on this island work? Reiko, climb up! Yeah, there's no way that that spider could climb up after us. And just like with all the other monsters in this movie, once you're away from the giant spider, there's no need to tell anybody about it. I mean, it's not like it's a big deal or anything. It looks like you haven't given up the experiment yet. Well, if you gave up reporting, would you just sit around and do nothing at all? No, I guess I'd have to do something. 
Well, I'm the same. Hey, that's very admirable, Professor. Say, uh, wasn't there something we were running from? But, oh, yeah! You know, Professor, I've been giving it some careful consideration, and I'm thinking maybe we should just forget about the experiment and get off this damn island already! As if being trapped by the spider wasn't bad enough. Now the little bastard that woke him up is here, too. <laughs> And look, now he's causing the cave to collapse. Wow, is there no end to this lovable little scamp's unhelpful and potentially life-threatening antics? Oh, and apparently Minya's gone from a donkey to sounding like a cat in heat. Get away from here! Well, at least the characters are finally starting to catch on that he's annoying. So after finally figuring out that conducting research is a little hard when there's giant monsters everywhere, the team decides to use the weather control device to freeze the monsters and then escape on a raft. Personally, I would have escaped the minute a six-foot mantis appeared, but again, that's just me. I suggest you go to a happy place, Minya, because it looks like you're about to get raped by the spider's mouth. <laughs> While all this is going on, Godzilla is... still sleeping. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm the king of the monsters. Don't worry, I'll take care of things when I feel like it. <coughs> ah, jeez. Well, I guess I gotta go save that useless son of mine. If only because that's one way to get him to shut up. Well, the Gymantuses weren't much trouble for Godzilla. I wonder how tough the Spiga will be. Huh. Okay, well that was easy. Ah, I'm just kidding. The fight lasts longer than that. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you think you're doing, Spiga? You are not wrapping Godzilla up and webbing. Mothra did that to him once already, and it is not happening again. I sure hope you all saw that, because it's the one useful thing Minya does the entire movie. Unfortunately, during the fight, the Spiga decides to use his deadliest power of all. Playing dead. What the hell? Did the spider just try and skull fuck Godzilla with its mouth? Oh, that does it. No way you live, Spiga. No way. Yeah, I should've let the spider eat you, kid. So anyway, the weather experiment is a success, and while everyone escapes on a raft, Godzilla and Minya freeze on the island. You know, I gotta admit, for two guys in rubber monster suits, that's actually pretty heartwarming. They'll go to sleep until the snow's gone. Or at least until the next movie. So there you have it, folks. That's Son of Godzilla. This tends to be one of the more divisive entries in the series, with some people seeing the introduction of Godzilla's son as a big step in the series being geared more towards children. And I will admit, a big factor in your enjoyment of this movie is really going to depend on your tolerance for Minya. Even though I'm not a fan of the smoke ring blowing little turd, the movie around him isn't terrible. The story moves at a decent pace, and it is a nice change that the other monsters aren't just your standard man in suit creations. Overall, it's a silly but fairly enjoyable monster movie, although personally I think it would have been more enjoyable if it had just been about Godzilla kicking some monster ass and not about him being an abusive father. Well, that's all for now, but I'm not done with Godzilla just yet. Tune in next time to watch me destroy all monsters. Until then...